Welcome to Real Food, everybody. Today, joining me is Dr. Richard Schlafmitz. Everybody knows and loves this guy. He's the chairman of cardiology at St. Francis Hospital. Dr. Schlafmitz, one time I introduced you at a board meeting at Catholic Health Services, and I said, this guy is like Babe Ruth. He's one of the famous players that we're going to remember forever for his contribution to what you've done in our system and what you've done at St. Francis Hospital. And I really mean it. You're unbelievable. I mean, you're a guy who's been there how many years? My 34th year. 34th year. Caseload a year, generally speaking. Over 3,000. 3,000 a year. And by the way, everybody who goes, they get your cell phone number, right? Yeah. And it's not like you have 50 cell phones. You have one cell phone. Just one. I mean, you're an incredible guy. I mean, and you're still loving it and right at it, right? Well, thank you for having me. It's an honor I, to be with I, you. So I, a believe lot of me, fun. I love you. I'm so glad to have you. Thank and when you. you're over, you're on. We get tons of people who tell us that you're on. I know you get it too, right? Thank you. It's a wonderful thing. I'm so glad to have you. And thank you so much for what you've been doing. It's my pleasure. Interesting times, right? We've come through this bad kind of moment of coronavirus. But in the midst of it all, you've been very involved too, right? Sure. I mean, it took us all by surprise, Monsignor. And it was a situation where we had no idea what was going to hit us. Yeah. And it hit us really bad, as we all know. But we all stuck together, and we, we came through it. You know, at one point, 95% of St. Francis was COVID patients. Wow. And our staff had to be retrained, had to take care of them. We were doing different things. I'm an interventional cardiologist. I basically was a social worker calling families every day since people couldn't be with their loved ones. Amazing. We went through tough times, but everybody had their PPE. Everybody had a ventilator. Everyone had a CCU. We had food and electricity. And we came through it. And right now, St. Francis is probably one of the safest places to be. We check everyone for COVID. We, we have sentries checking staff every day. We have less than a handful of COVID people that are sequestered very carefully. So we're doing everything we can now. Yeah. And we're back to normal business. Incredible. And we're ready just in case it happens again. We're ready now. It's so. amazing. It's terrific. And I mean, one of the things I love about the work that you do is that there's a lot of hope in what you do. You know, um, you lose very few patients um, because you're so darn good at what you do. And, and the way the heart technology has advanced, it's amazing what can be done now. I mean, it's not like it was 25 years ago even, right? If you think about it, we could replace a valve in your heart and you go home the next day through the groin without a stitch. <laughs> incredible. Yeah. I could put a stent in an artery where previously you needed bypass surgery. You go home that day and you're back playing tennis. It's incredible. What yeah. we can do is incredible yeah. with defibrillators, pacemakers, heart failure, angioplasty, open heart. Cardiology is a great business to be in because yeah. you, you help people right away. It's instant gratification. Now, coronavirus, not so hopeful. No. And that's a big change. Well, you know, none of us knew what to do with corona. Everybody was an expert, but I always told people nobody really knew what they were doing. We were doing the best we could. And the key with corona was don't get it. You yeah. know, you have to be smart about social distancing and everything. But we're getting there. We're learning things. And there is hope for the future. There will be a vaccine. And if it happens again, we're going to be prepared. Yeah, it's a different story now because we've walked the road together, right? Something about that. Now, you were saying usually this time of year you would be in the south of France? For 26 years, my wife and I... That's my only vacation, the beginning of July. We're in the south of France in wow. an incredible place along the Mediterranean. Wow. And this year, obviously, we were in traveling places. Sure. And when I went to do this show, Dr. O said to me, Rich, you're always making steak and French fries and Which I love. things that are bad for you. Wait, I you love that. It? But we all put on the COVID-40, yeah. sitting home, not having portion control. So he said, I really want you to do something healthy. So what I thought I would do is make something healthy but also bring you to the idea of what I would be experiencing if I was in the south of France right now and what the French at the seaside resorts and hotels and just the people in general. What a great idea. How, how, what they eat there. Oh, that's awesome. That's great. So what do you have? What did you bring? I mean, you have a lot of nice ingredients. Yeah, it's so colorful. Yeah. So that's the key thing. Colorful. It, when you picture the um, impressionist painters in the 1800s, they all were in the south of France. If you go to restaurants, they're actually their paintings are in the restaurants. That's how they paid for their room and board. Wow. It's incredible. Wow. But everything is about color, whether it's um, water lilies or um, flowers or fruit. or Everything is about color, the beautiful seaside, the mountains. And this is a Nissois salad after Nice, Nissois, that's how sure, they pronounce sure. it. And the nice thing about it, everything is fresh. When you go shopping in France, there were little markets, outdoor markets, like you could picture in the early 1900s, 1800s. And you go that day. The refrigerators are very small because you cook every day. Every day. That day. 
you don't have anything frozen like we did during COVID. Yeah. You go that day to the market, you pick out what's fresh there, and you put it together. And it doesn't look processed, a lot of this This stuff. is all, so I try, and each thing has a, um, a little different than what we have in America. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take you through each thing. Um, so the first thing is you're going to want lettuce as your base. Sure. So we have lettuce. I used a Boston lettuce, even though it's Boston. But you <laughs> want a flat lettuce that's going to be able to incorporate the dressing and the ingredients. Mm -hmm. And we put that as our base. And then you try to arrange things symmetrically. Now, we have here French green beans, or Aricot Vert. You say, well, what's the difference between a French green bean and an American green bean? Yeah. First of all, you note know they're thinner. Right, I know. They're crunchier. That. Yeah. Right? And what you do is you just steam these for a couple of minutes uh -huh. and then put them in an ice bath so they retain the color. Nice color, yeah. With a little lemon juice and salt, kosher salt. And you get these wonderful crunchy green beans. Isn't that cool? So we're going to start with some Aricot Vert. And they definitely taste different than your American gre uh, green beans. Your green now, are they diet. available like at the, at the good supermarkets? And these stuff? are available. Some of the things I'm going to be talking about are not available. Okay. okay. So I'm going to arrange these in order. And you want color and symmetry. So we're going to put them opposite each other. While you're doing that, tell me about this great addition to your, um, your group, your practice right now that's going to be starting very soon. I'm very excited about this. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you for the promotion. My son, Evan... <coughs> Excuse me. My son, Evan, who has been training forever, it seems, is joining our practice on Monday. So that would be pretty it. exciting. I love it. So what's that going to be like, father and son? What do you think? It's going to be interesting. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I love well, it. Well, we have our green beans in, our aricot vert, and now radishes. This is a good, healthy thing, and it's also it's giving you color. It's so important. So we have our radishes, our aricot vert. Now, tomatoes. We have some little cherry tomatoes. Now, the key with tomatoes, any tomato, as you know, is you want to salt it. The salt mm. brings out the flavor. Yeah. So you want to salt your tomatoes, and that really makes them taste great. And they look beautiful. They're like little baby heirlooms. They're beautiful with the colors and everything. That's what we want. This We want this to be symmetrical, colorful. Just makes you want to eat it. And it's so simple to do, right? Yeah. I mean, and again, it's, it's, it's kind of like, this would be like a lunch, would you get? It's would lunch. You, yeah. With a little rosé, you're sitting by a little port. There are yeah. like 20 ports from Monaco to Saint-Tropez. Every five miles or kilometers, there's a little port town. Each one's a little different. Yeah. Five miles up, there's a mountain range, these medieval ranges. Wow. And each day we'd go to a different place. We'd either have lunch by a port and then go up to the mountain and walk around. Beautiful, beautiful. So and I'm guessing a baguette would, gets involved here somewhere, right? A lot of baguettes. I would think, yeah. This is so great. now we're going to give you a little protein with some hard-boiled eggs. And eggs are, are not bad for you. I know sometimes people have negative connotation about egg or the cholesterol. Mm -hmm. It's a tremendous amount of protein. And you're going to notice here, I'm not having any carbohydrates here. I noticed that there's really no you, carbohydrates. Usually yeah. you have some boiled potatoes, but yeah. because I gained some weight, I'm keeping the carbohydrates up. And if you do that, you certainly are going to get your weight down. But right now we have all protein, a lot of vegetables, a lot of nutrients here. Everything's going really well. A lot really of bulk, well. too, you know, to fill up. So Absolutely. It's good. Now, these are the swa olives. They're different than your green olive. Uh -huh. This has a nutty taste to it almost a hazelnut or an almond taste. They're really good. It's, it's very tasty. They're salty. I love these. These are pitted, so you're going to have to be careful when you eat them not to uh, take your teeth out. I oh, yeah, sure, sure. I took one of my teeth out the other day, uh. and I had to get a new cap because I bit into this olive. But these are great, great olives. They're and they're from Nice. You can use them for olive oil or olives. So now look at all the different colors. Yeah, it's now, beautiful. These peppers are just some... Sliced peppers, which we have here, more for color and crunch, but they're just making things look interesting. Yeah, it's beautiful. And, and peppers are delicious. They're wonderful, too. Right. Now, um, capers. Some people use anchovies. I'm not a big anchovy fan, so for a little saltiness, I'm going to sprinkle some capers here. And that's very traditional in French cooking, yep, capers, right? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And here's our tuna. Now, the tuna I use is not bumblebee. <laughs> the tuna is from, actually, Italy. You say, well, why are you using something from Italy? You're talking about France. Well, what's great about Europe is that Italy, France, and Spain, all along the coast, sure. it's a, a half-hour hour drive away. Yeah. So whatever you can get in one community, you can get in the next. Because so we always think it's eight hours away, but it's a plane ride, drive. but not at all. So this is some fresh tuna, which is just wonderful, really is great, mixed in with there. What I like about that, too, is it actually looks like what it is. It, it looks, looks like tuna, right. you know, which is... It really does. When you get it in a little can, it doesn't look much like anything. So now we're up to the part of our dressing. And you don't need anything fancy for the dressing. We're going to use some olive oil. I like to use the olive oil from Spain. Yeah, it's really olive oil. great olive oil. I'm using Goya. And I'm going to use... Nice rich color on that, too. Beautiful. 
Now, when you're giving people advice in the office, I mean, are you recommending this kind of stuff? You know, people always tell me about you, Dr. Schlaff, but you know, a finger shaker. You're not one of these people who says, no more ever, ever again, you know, that I like kind of to be realistic. Yeah, yeah. So here's our olive oil. So it's simple olive oil, and you're gonna say, okay, where is the vinegar? Well, vinegar gives you acid. I'm gonna use lemon juice. Lemon's wonderful, yeah. So instead of vinegar, we're just gonna use lemon juice. That's beautiful. And I'm putting it in here first so that when I have any pits, you can fight them off. I can fight them off. Yeah. So we have our olive, our lemon juice. Beautiful. And salt. You can smell all the smells coming up now. It just smells great. How it's healthy just, is this? I mean, yeah, it's, I mean like, it's a very it's healthy oil and lemon juice, healthy salt, meat. pepper. And then the most important ingredient, just north of the Côte d'Azur, the south of France, Dijon. Dijon mustard. Some Dijon mustard. The famous Get for, that of in there. Now, is it different? Is the Dijon a little different in France when you're actually there? Because we buy this Americanized kind of Dijon. What do you think? There are several different varieties, mm -hmm. but they're, they're, you can get this. Pretty you know, close, yeah. In 2020, you can get anything, anything from anywhere. Anything you want anyway, yeah, thanks Every, to the internet. Look what we got from Wuhan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, thanks anyway. <laughs> All right, so here's our dressing. That's it. Wow, right. look how and nice. And then you're going to pour this around here. It just smells great. It looks fresh. What a beautiful dish, huh? Wow, that's great. I love it. And yeah. that, that would be your lunch, right? With a this little is, wine, this maybe? This is your lunch with a little rosé wine. It costs nothing. It's, their vineyards are right there. And then you just toss this, and you have your lunch. You have your lunch. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a little break. Dr. Schlafmitz is sticking around. We have a lot to talk about. Stick around. More real food right after this. The Catholic Faith Network Green Room was provided by Lane Office, your workspace built with integrity. Welcome back, everybody. Beautiful salad, right? It's incredible. Now, one of the things you and I were speaking about, Dr. Schlaufmitz, during this coronavirus time is you, you got in touch with me and you say, listen, I want to do a special. Now, I want to do like a video special, like a, almost like a telethon. And you're explaining this to me and I'm like, yeah, this is going to take like a year to plan. I mean, this is an incredible amount of work that you want to do. And then next thing I know, you know, you're interviewing me and then Next thing I know, it's done. I mean, you pulled together something that takes, you know, a year and a half, sometimes a year and 10 months to plan. And you just did this, like, in a couple of weekends. And it's all for a tremendous cause. So can you tell us about, first of all, how it happened and what it is? Well, I like to be busy. And uh, my office manager made a comment, it takes a pandemic to slow me down. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I knew there was a tremendous need financially and mental health. For people to get together and I'm fortunate I know a lot of people in different areas whether they're celebrities or athletes or colleagues clergy so many different people who want to do something to help everybody wanted to help sure and I went to people I knew people that you know Susan Lucci an amazing person yeah. Ed Cranepool some of the nurses and respiratory therapists in my hospital the karate kid Ralph, Ralph Macchio, Macchio sure. yourself Dr. Gersey there were so many people colleagues from Europe giving a European perspective and I said could you give me five minutes of your time nobody said no, no. everybody no. said yes and it wasn't scripted we just did this talking to each other you did it with me you know we just yeah. talked yeah and I try oh, I had Mike Francesa another great guy yeah so we had all these wonderful people and I tried to have them talk about their experience, how they're handling it. People want to know how everybody else was handling it. Mm -hmm. We were in a time where it was unknown. The scary part at that time, now we're past it, but the scary, we didn't know what was on the other side of the door. It's true. It's true. And not know, and we wanted people to tell us. Yeah, yeah. We wanted a calming effect. And I thought that, A, by hearing all these people from different walks of life and bring it to the community, will give some peace. Yeah, yeah. But also, hospitals around Long Island, and that's what it was called, it was Long Islanders for Long Island. Mm -hmm. We needed to raise money because we didn't know if we were going to get money from the federal government. We, weren't, we were losing money. Everything we were doing was a loss leader. Sure. So we raised money, and it was done within two weeks, 
two weekends and a couple of weekdays. And, you know, I, I think you're going to show some of the clips, little clips of different people. And each one is interesting in a different way. So it was, it was really a, uh, an undertaking that I never did this before. And thanks to these video conferences that we now are used to, yeah, sure. you're able to do it at home on a computer. And uh, it, it's amazing. We're going to show a, a clip now that kind of sums up some of these people that Dr. Schlafmitz is talking about. When we get back, though, we'll talk about how you can help, too. So take a look at this. Hi, everybody. Um, I don't think I need any introduction here. This is the uh, king of queens, if you will. You'll always be the king of queens to me. I, I was like the king of hearts, so we're working together. But uh, this is Kevin James, who's nice enough to uh, talk with us today. When I met Kevin the first time, it wasn't a, a, a pleasant time. Uh, his mom was pretty sick. And Kevin's mom was had so many complex things wrong with it. God, you know, God willing, she did well and, and, and went home and is fine right now. But at the time, there were so many things going on with her. And when you speak to some patients' families, you never know how they're going to react. And the one thing that was impressive, I mean, Kevin James, a big famous guy, he's someone who didn't overreact. He took all the information I gave him, integrated that information, and asked extremely appropriate, caring questions, but not emotional you know, demanding this, demanding that. He never demanded anything from any staff member. He treated everybody the same. And what I was most impressed about you is how smart you are. You know, I don't know anything about your professional life in terms of how smart it takes to be a comedian, but as a human being, the things that I discussed with you and you integrated it and really came up with amazing questions. I was extraordinarily impressed. And I don't know if I ever told you that, but it was very impressive. It's very sweet of you, but I got to say that really come, it, it, it's, it's your, to your credit because... Uh, coming in uh, on a situation like that, I remember the day I walked in on that, and there were so many problems. And my mother, she was beyond, you know, she was beyond gone. I mean, it was like, it was, it didn't look good. I saw a look at my mother's face that I've, you know, obviously never seen before. And it was crazy because people were running around and things are going on and questions. And me and my brother were there and my sister. And, and it was you who, uh, I mean, it was a true leadership situation where you really, you didn't sugarcoat things. You just said, this is what we got to do. And it was like watching uh, like Tom Brady, like a master quarterback, just take over a whole situation. And throughout that whole process, that's what blew me away about you is, is how you, because you had everybody from her, you know, from her liver, they had to watch her kidneys and this and that. And each doctor's got their own little specialty that they have to work on. And you being in cardiology, which we, you, you, the way you handled all of that and our family, and I've got to say, I've never, ever, you know, the caring and, and the phone calls, and it can never be easy with any family, I'm sure. But it was it was incredible what you did, the effort you put it in. And I'll never, ever forget it. And it absolutely saved my mom's life. Thank you. So I, I thank you. I appreciate that. So I'm here with Ralph Macchio, and I'm really honored to have him on with us. You know, this is about Long Islanders for Long Island, and you can't get more Long Island than Ralph Macchio. He's a famous movie star. And you know, unlike other movie stars, he's still here on Long Island. And unlike other movie stars, he fell in love with his high school sweetheart and is still married to her after all these years. So he's a little outside the box. But what's impressive to me about you, Ralph, and we've never really spoken, like, and we know each other through mutual friends, is that how many people in their lifetime are stars of two movies that, that are the type of movies that when they come on TV or you go to some type of streaming thing and you watch it, it you can watch it a thousand times. <laughs> there are a couple of movies in the history of, of movies, there are a couple of movies like that. You can't watch them enough. You know, The Karate Kid and My Cousin Vinny. It doesn't matter how many times you watch them. It's like the first time. And that's got to be such a great feeling that you can make so many people around the world feel so good. And you do. So, it's a, listen, it's, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Um, it's amazing. The Karate Kid certainly is uh, in the zeitgeist still to this day. And with the Cobra Kai series we now have on, um, which is picking it up 35 years, 36 years later. And, uh, and just uh, the fans have just come to this big groundswell of revisiting these characters, yet telling fresh original stories. And My Cousin Vinny, to me, it's I call it the late for dinner movie, because if it's on you're going to be late for dinner because you just, you just have, it's just like one more setup pays off next more next setup pays off. Interesting. Those films are so different, but yet it's still overcoming the obstacles and rooting for the underdog at the end of the day. And uh, yeah, I have a couple, I've gotten lucky more than a few times and over my shoulder, I see I have the outsiders poster up there, which is another film uh, that launched a, a bunch of careers. So 
I'm blessed in that way. And especially during this time to be able to shed a little bit of, of warmth, positivity, light uh, through, through storytelling and, and touch people in a certain way. I'm just the lucky guy who got the part, you know. A lot of friends of CFN there, which is it was amazing to see. But people just offering some hope, which is such an important thing for us all to have, some beautiful stories. You know, one of the things, Dr. Schlafmitz, I think people can still view this. I mean, it's still viewable online. I mean, Absolutely. without that. So can you tell us where they can find it to view yeah, it? If you go to um, the um, Schlaf Schlafmitz Heart Foundation, you can pull it up on a website. But if you go to YouTube and just type in my name, Schlafmitz Heart, there are 25 different interviews. Oh, that's and cool. you don't have to listen to all of them, but... Um, each one, whoever you like, you can pick out, and it's a couple of minutes. It's fun. And it wasn't like just a pointless thing because you're raising funds to help. So how can people help if they want to help out? Well, if you, um, you know, any, your favorite organization you want to donate to, but for us, I'm doing it for Long Island Hospital, specifically CHS Hospitals. Sure. To help us through this time, just donate to the, it's a tax deductible. You'll get your tax deductible letter to the Schlafman's Heart Foundation. Yeah, it's a wonderful thing. It's a great thing to be involved in because you kind of feel like we're, we're sort of paying it forward a little bit. You know, we've been gifted, so how do we help somebody else, and this is a great way to do that. It's an important thing. Before you leave, I want to make sure we switch a little bit gears into heart health a little bit, too, because you're always on the cutting edge of the latest technology. So what's coming up in heart health? What's the latest in heart health for all of us? So many wonderful things. Each year in cardiology, something new and exciting is happening. What St. Francis has been a leader in is what we call precision angioplasty. Conventionally, when people have angiograms needing stents, it's a two-dimensional image on an angiogram. But for the last seven, eight years, we've developed this technology, precision angioplasty, where we have a computerized camera inside the artery that can tell you exactly what's going on. It tells you the morphology. Is it calcified? Is it lipid? Is it fibrotic? And that's important because it tells you how to pre-treat it before you deliver your stent. Wow. It tells us the exact length of disease. So when I ask for a stent off the shelves, a stent is a long metal um, spring, if you will. It comes in different lengths, different sizes. In the past, or even now, most people around the world, when they do it, they look up at the screen and they go, eh, it looks around 23 millimeters. What do you think, Monsi? And you go, well, to me, it looks like 25. Wow. I'm not that smart. <laughs> this computer tells me to the millimeter the exact length of stent to land in a normal tissue. Wow. In addition to size, you want the size to be the size of the artery. You don't want to guess. It takes the mystery out of angioplasty. Wow. And it lets us know we have a perfect result. And what I'm very proud of is we started this seven, eight years ago. Only 3% of the world uses it. And we've been teaching people all over. People come to St. Francis to learn this. But right now, there are 20 interventionalists at St. Francis. 85% of the time, they're using it. The times they're not using it, there's technical reasons why you can't. But if you come to St. Francis or CH Hospital, Good Sam has it. We're opening hospitals in Mercy, St. Joe's, and we have St. Catherine's. They all have the same wonderful technology we have at St. Francis. Wow. They have it at every one of our CHS hospitals. Wow. And it doesn't matter which doctor you go to, you're going to get the same precision angioplasty because we made it standard of care. Isn't that crazy? So it's really exciting. And if you come see it, you won't believe your eyes when you're seeing it. It really is wonderful. Well, speaking of that, like if you want to go to our website, on demand, we have a show that Dr. O did with Dr. Schlafmitz. And they're actually in the OR. They're doing, like he's doing this and narrating through an actual patient that he's helping. And I tell you the truth, I told you this before we started today. I was walking by a television here in the studios not long ago and the show was on. We were broadcasting the show. I stopped in front of the TV and I watched it for 25 minutes. It was astounding. And how you were narrating and saying, like, look, here's the 3D view. Take a look at this. And I mean, you know, it's one of those things where you look at it and the way you explain it, you can understand it. And you say, this is incredible that we're able to do this now. It's, a, it's great being a cardiologist. It's just yeah. amazing stuff. But that's one aspect. The other things we're doing is structural heart. This is where a lot of new technology is coming. You've heard of valve replacements with aortic valves, mitral valves. And you used to have to open up someone's chest. They'd be on a ventilator. They'd be in the hospital for seven to ten days. It'd take a month or two to recover. Now we're doing it through the groin, wow. mounted on a stent. You're home the next day, back to work. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's so, so terrific. There are so many wonderful things happening. Heart failure, arrhythmia. St. Francis is on the cutting edge. We have great people. We're involved in research. And one thing that you have to know, in 2020, we are the safest place to be. Yeah. When you come to St. Francis, people would say, is it safe there? You're safer there than a supermarket. Sure. Where, I mean, we check COVID. We're extremely careful with sentries. You come in, you get your picture taken. We check your temperature, your oxygen rate, your heart rate. You're interviewed. Patients are all tested. It is a safe place to be. And people need to be confident that you can get your health care now sure. safely 
at a CHS hospital. It's terrific. And it's such an important thing for us to keep that in mind, too. And, you know, one of the things Dr. Schlafman said on another show, I never forgot, he said, you know, with the technology that is out there today, really, nobody should die from a heart issue because it's so unbelievable what can be done now, right? It's education. Yeah. I always tell, if you give someone the information to understand that they need help and you seek help, we can save you. It's incredible. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Okay, we're going to take a break. We'll be back with more Real Food right after this. So, Dr. Schlafmitz, we only have a minute left, but a lot of websites here to think about. We have the CHS LI website, right? Important for CHS. You're part and parcel, like I said. You're one of the you're one of the famous Yankees in CHS. Um, you brought so much to the table. Uh, people are looking for a doctor, looking for help. They go to the website, they find you, right? They find anybody. Yeah, no. If you go to CHS website for a cardiologist, you're not going to go wrong. That's one thing, right? Your website, so we can learn more about the work you're doing, the, the great foundation that you have that does such great work, too. Well, it's a charitable organization for hospitals. Yeah. You know, all the money goes to the hospitals. I have an education fund for our nurses to educate them. And it's purely for nursing education. Jesus Christ. And that's money that the hospital doesn't have to pay. And it makes... We have the best nurses. I always talk about this. Yeah. What makes St. Francis and CHS different than other places are nurses. That, that's our pillar, our foundation. Yeah. They want to work there because they know we appreciate them. And by having them go to educational conferences and teaching, they want to learn. Sure. So we're very fortunate to have them. And that's what part of the foundation goes to. And that's that front line that we give such honor to, right? We were beeping our horns at 7 o'clock every night. For our nurses. For that crowd. Those, Those were the people. heroes. That's the truth. These right? were young people yeah. who were right in there the whole time. Yeah. They, they were the heroes. Incredible people. And they've stayed that way in our hearts, too. And by the way, if you want this recipe, which is a great recipe, if you'd like to go to France and stay at home, go to cfntv.org, click on Real Food, go to Dr. Schlafmitz, and you'll find this recipe there, too. So thanks for joining us. Let's keep one another in prayer. You know, no matter what our faith is, we keep one another in prayer. We ask God to help us through and to continue to give us hope. We'll see you next time. Thank you, Dr. Schlafmitz. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you. We'll see you next time on Real Food. Musco Food and its brand Vantia are proud to support real food. Find Vantia cheese, cured meats, olive oil, and Italian specialty foods in your local supermarket or email us at info at muscofood.com for a list of retailers near you. Real Food Set and Appliances has been provided by Chufo Cabinetry, a family tradition of fine woodworking since 1907. Chufo Cabinetry has been filling the custom cabinetry needs of the New York Tri-State area for over 100 years by combining old world techniques with modern technology to provide the finest custom kitchens and millwork. Luxury appliance innovators Sub-Zero, Wolf, and Cove. Cosentino, a Spanish company world leader in the production and distribution of innovative surfaces for architecture and design. Silestone, Decton, and Sensa by Cosentino, technologically advanced surfaces that allow the creation of unique designs for the home and public spaces. Blackman Plumbing Supply. Visit a Blackman showroom today and let their specially trained design consultants help you find the luxury plumbing, tile, lighting, and stone products you need to make your project a success. Top Knobs, the designer's choice.